Friday Fitness on a Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to try something different, slightly different with this vlog, but not too terribly different. Um, I was going back and forth a lot on if I wanted to script this or if I was going to do it off the cuff and the decision to do things off the cuff is A, I will never get around to writing the script, I will always intend to write the script, and two, I don't want things to just sound rehearsed and blah blah blah, so I'm gonna make some mistakes and gloss over some stuff and sound stupid, but um, this is the internet. <laughs> what I want to talk about as I titled the video is the foods that I include in my diet to mitigate my depression. Uh, I, I've put in a lot of work and time into um, just living with depression as best as possible and like uh, philosophically uh, or, or hypothetically my plan was just to try and do all of the things that you know, might give you a 5% mitigation of your depression. Because if, so if you can include certain foods and get some exercise and have a hobby and meditate and maintain your close friendships, those are all like a 5% boost. That's a 25% boost you just, you just cashed in. That's a quarter of the way there. Uh, so I spent a lot of time reading about food. Um, I was going to, see, already slipping up. I was going to have some books on hand, but books are scattered throughout the house. One of them is right here. Um, this is a book I really liked. Uh, I'm so disorganized. This is a book I really liked. Um, it's just about like how, as you can see, it's about how to eat to, to best serve your brain. And it is where my love of eggs came from. Now, eggs, uh, for our purposes here, the special thing about eggs is that they contain acetylcholine. And acetylcholine is really good for your brain. I used to eat four scrambled eggs every day. Turned out I don't really digest eggs well, so I'm down to just having one hard-boiled egg each day. Um, which sucks because eggs are also a great source of protein and a great source of fats. Uh, and yeah, I'm sitting on my bedroom floor and I've just got some food in front of me. <laughs> uh, sardines. Now, if anyone uh, out there, if, like if you're into self-improvement at all, you're into Tim Ferriss, or at least, I mean, his popularity might have kind of crescendoed already, but he's he, he travels with sardines, like, in his go bag. Uh, and the great thing about sardines in this particular case is that they contain selenium. Selenium is a really hard to find rare mineral, but eating a can of sardines every day, just like eggs, great source of protein, uh, great source of, of fats, source of vitamin D as well. But the fact that they contain like 90% of your daily selenium is fantastic. <laughs> And then I can't find it on here, and I'm panicking. Anyways, yes, sardines contain selenium, which is very, very good at mitigating depression and, and just moderating your energy levels. Dark chocolate. Uh, you should... I forget, I forget which book this is in. The phone is ringing. Dark chocolate, take two. Uh, this is where I'm going to be the most vague. I cannot remember how to pronounce the thing that's in dark chocolate, and, and I don't want to look it up, but I, dark chocolate is good for you, it's anything, it, it'll be mentioned in brain food, this other book that I was going to bring down is called Mental Fitness, it has great diet stuff in it, um, everything you read about nutrition is going to tell you to, to eat some dark chocolate, but you have to eat actual dark chocolate, <laughs> not milk chocolate, um, do, do like, do something like Lind, start with like a 70% and work your way up. Eventually, at like 95 and 99, you are just eating dirt, but 
90. I can have uh, a square or two of this every day after, basically after every meal. It's really, really good for the digestion. Um, I'm going to take you guys into the kitchen in a minute here and, and string this video together in what already feels so much more slapdash than I ever intended it to be. But I got to talk about kefir. This is my probiotic. Now, there are three specific bacteria that I recently read were um, particularly good at mitigating anxiety and depression, and they're very, very hard to find. It's even hard to find um, probiotic things that will list what the bacteria are. A lot of kefir will, though. So these guys list, like, that many, and I am just um, taking a spray and pray uh, strategy with this, where I was like, well, if it's got that many different bacteria in it, um, it's got to have some of the ones I need, even though it doesn't have the specific ones that I was looking for by name. I'm still in the search for those, and I'm not going to try and pronounce them. Um, so yeah, I will have a glass of this upon, or like a cup, literally 250 milliliters. Um, I will have a cup of this first thing every morning, and it has the benefit of getting some probiotics on an empty stomach, which is important because I read that if you take your probiotics with your normal vitamins after a meal, your stomach acid is going to do a lot of damage to the, to the bacterial culture that you're trying to preserve. You want to get them down into your, your gut and your colon and your... Um, but it's also really, really um, calorically pretty powerful stuff. And getting some calories in you immediately on waking up really stabilizes your blood sugar for like the whole day and it this can be like a double-edged sword it will actually prevent you from being hungry like if you skip breakfast and then don't eat till lunch you will find yourself like i've done this but with myself and if you do it you will find the same thing i'm sure if you don't eat until lunch you will overeat at dinner and you will eat until you're uncomfortable because your, your body is just trying to make up this, this perceived deficit. Uh, but if you get some calories in you immediately on waking up, you will have a comfortable dinner and after dinner uh, experience. You won't overeat. You won't go to bed bloated. Um, it's, I don't want to say life hack, because that's a, that's a terrible term now. But it's a great strategy for getting your nutrition in throughout the day. Now, uh, I will show you guys the kitchen. There's my coffee. Coffee, uh, and I'm like, I don't, I wasn't for sure going to include this, but uh, I just learned because of Michael Pollan that coffee is actually where most people in North America actually get their supply of antioxidants. So, coffee is good for you. Uh, I drink mine black. I think everyone should, but you don't have to but you should. Uh, okay, and then this is something, um, so yeah, I said I would talk about the supplements. So let's talk about those. Uh, in terms of depression, it's only the vitamin D that truly matters. Uh, take two of those a day, They're pretty strong. Should I do this in the mirror or should I talk like so? Mirror style, okay. Um, living in Canada. I started taking vitamin D just one, just to get through one winter, because we don't get enough sunlight here. Uh, like, there's just no way in a Canadian winter that you are actually going to naturally get your vitamin D, even if you were outside all the time, uh, or as much as you could be, right? So, supplementing vitamin D for one winter, I noticed the effects and, and just kept it up forever, just have kept it up since. Um, supplementing vitamin D is really good. And then the other things, just if anyone's curious, this is fenugreek, which I'm not sold on is effective. It's supposed to be a natural testosterone booster and good for your gut. Both things I would benefit from, so I take that. I'm going to try going without it for a while and see if I notice any dip in effects. This is just glucosamine. 
uh, because I'm a runner and a lifter and uh, I need to protect my joints. These are pumpkin seeds. Um, they're a good source of zinc. <laughs> uh, these guys are just my protein powder, some collagen, and creatine. And I saved my uh, protein powder packaging because this is the one I'm, st I'm sticking with. Uh, I, you know, normally I like I was I was cycling through a whole bunch trying to see if any of them really made a you know a true difference if any were better than the other and this one I'm staying on because it's not just a protein powder it's got probiotics and fiber and just a jillion things in it you'll never be able to read this or anything like that but there's just a ton and ton of stuff in it that's uh, that's beneficial so that's the one I'm sticking with and I just put things in these jars so that they look nice and tight that one has the remains of some stickers on it. Uh, then, there's a cat right there. Uh, yeah, like I said, I would show you guys my preparation for uh, sardines. I don't know how I'm gonna fucking do this. This is stupid. By the way, this is really good olive oil. This is also something I found that I'm sticking with. Because it's just goddamn delicious. You know when you can just... I think it's something I'd only previously experienced in restaurants where you can just tell that olive oil is good olive oil. I always just assumed that they had access to something truly special. But this stuff is really, really great. It tastes expensive. And then I do a little of this. This is just a flavorful blend of herbs. And then, you freaking eat it with a spoon. <laughs> like I said, I take pride in, in just eating cans of sardines with a spoon. Uh, talking to a buddy of mine a long time ago and he's like oh yeah you know I was talking about the importance of eating fish and he's like yeah I have this great uh, spinach and tuna wrap and you do this this and this and I was like man shut up just just eat a can of fish with a spoon what's wrong with you okay I think that was everything in the kitchen worth explaining and talking about I mean, none of it's worth explaining and talking about but everything that I felt inclined to show and talk about. Look how cute this cat is. He won't let me open the fridge. Okay. Let me just think if I missed anything or if I want to make any closing remarks or anything like that. Now I wish I had scripted this. <laughs> um, but yeah, getting, getting enough protein in to support your body, um, trying to get just enough calories overall, trying to avoid big blood sugar swings. Is, is really really good um, trying to get healthy fats like trying to get your omega-3s and your omega-6s balanced or as close to balance as possible is a, a favor you can do for yourself and eating on a schedule I think is also really really big uh, I already mentioned having the kefir first thing every morning I will then have like a teaspoon of honey before my workout do my workout then I'll immediately have my protein shake and a can of sardines uh, and then a square of dark chocolate to help digest those things. And then on to dinner later, which will always be a stir fry. Every healthy person everywhere just eats nothing but stir fry or crap in a pan. Uh, and yeah. And then just for you know life balance sake, usually once a week 
Liv and I will go out for a meal and I'll just have whatever I want. Not, it's not in a cheat meal because I'm not on a diet, but it's an indulgent, fun meal. Uh, I've, I've found that eating, there's kind of, there's work eating and there's recreational eating. And I think the majority of people accidentally think that all eating is recreational eating, which is why they eat when they're bored and they don't think about what they eat. They're eating to make the feeling of hunger go away as quickly as possible. They're not eating to live and to support their body, even though that's what they would say. I made a video on this a long, long time ago when I lived in a different apartment and I was making a different point, but people will say they eat to live, but they don't. They eat to make the feeling of hunger go away. And like they're just eating to change their mood. Eating to live is knowing what's in your food and why you're eating it and when you're eating it. Um, so, sip of coffee, quick thoughts. Uh, but you can get kind of locked into the habit accidentally of thinking that all you're eating has to be really, really purposeful and like some people um, will, will develop even like what, what, what's called orthorexia where they are obsessively preoccupied with healthy eating and excluding things until they, they've done themselves harm. Uh, so it's important to sometimes, just you know, throughout the week, whenever, eat something for the enjoyment of eating it. Not everything has to be the, the hard and fast rules of, of nutritional benefit. But yeah, find your, find your comfortable space on that spectrum of how much you care about enjoying eating. Like I said in the kitchen, um, I, I like eating just a can of sardines with a spoon and I, I find any more uh, I don't know why I'm tempted to say pretense and snobbery um, laughable. Like, you, you don't need to make wraps or little fajitas or this or that or any quick snacks. Like, any list of, like, healthy meal prep you can do is so stupid. You just eat a can of sardines with a spoon. Uh, just eat a hard-boiled egg. <laughs> just get the the most greenest, disgusting, vegan, all-in-one protein powder you can. Shake it up and chug it. Um, I, th there's also a point here, god this is gonna be long, there's a point here that the easier you can make things the more likely you are to do them, which is the point of meal prepping. Um, just being able to, like just having kefir in the fridge at all times, um, and have a cup every morning, and it's just a cup. There's no preparation of any kind. Not a blender, not anything. Just pour a cup and drink it. Open a can of sardines, eat it. Hard-boiled eggs are already peeled, so that's the, uh, that's the amount of meal prep that I do on weekends. I boil a dozen eggs, and I peel them, and I store them in water, in, in salt water. Um, yeah, I eat squares of dark chocolate that are already in bar form. It's very, very quick and easy. Um, I showed you guys the jar of pumpkin seeds that's just on the counter. Whenever you're in the kitchen for any reason, have a jar of pumpkin seeds and drink a half glass of water, right? Making things just simple and easy and then quick as possible. And I think people get stuck on meal prep. They always think, yeah, I'm going to make you know, a dozen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cook a dozen chicken breasts and rice and organize them into Tupperware in the fridge. Like, you are not a professional bodybuilder. You are not going to do that. You are not going to stick to it. <laughs> So yeah, I'll wrap this up because it, it's long and stuttery and panicky, but hopefully uh, I at least got across something that makes someone think that they can mitigate their depression and, and support their body and mind in, in helpful ways with what they eat. So, go in peace.